Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the FX4CR, specifically the question, should you or shouldn't you buy it? I think one of the biggest challenges for those of us who create content for YouTube is completely knowing what's in your mind and completely conveying what's in our mind as we're talking about something. I've done two brief videos on this so far. One was just my unboxing, and I don't do unboxings in the traditional sense, but I was really excited about this and wanted to share it with you. And then I just did a quick QSO to show how this was working with 20 watts on my Magloop antenna in the attic. I'm excited about this radio. And I think one of the challenges is then conveying to you perhaps some of my concerns about this radio and maybe leading you to believe that this is the absolute perfect radio for you. And then you going and investing $550 in this radio, which is its sale price right now on the BG2FX website. And perhaps that is a good decision for you, but you can't base that solely on my excitement. So let's talk about that a little bit today. Head on over to the bg2fx.com website and you'll begin to understand what some of the excitement is about. This is a tiny transceiver. It fits in the palm of your hand. It does not have an internal battery, so keep that in mind when you think about size and use case, nor does it have an internal tuner. Not a problem for those of us who work with resonant antennas or already own a small form factor tuner for portable operations. It operates and transmits on all the hand bands with the exception of 160 60 meters. And while I operate strictly single sideband voice at this time in my ham way of life, for those of you who work digital, it has that built in. Add to this the fact that you get 20 watts of output on all the bands with the exception of six meters, which I believe is five watts. And you begin to wonder how you, the designer, the manufacturer was able to pack in all of that functionality and power. And that leads me to perhaps one of the most intriguing things about this radio for me. You. Why you? That's the designer and manufacturer's name. He's an individual in China who came up with this, who's developed and designed and sold other radios that are small form factor similar to this, but this is his. And what I have put all geopolitical issues aside and ham radio operator to ham radio operator, here's an individual that thought this up, designed it, collaborated with others, of course, but he manufactured this himself. This didn't come off of some assembly line in the hundreds or the thousands. This came from one individual assembling this and he crafted it and made it for me. He didn't know my name. He doesn't know my ham radio YouTube channel. He did know my call sign. He did know, I guess he did know my name because I had put my order in and he shipped it out to me personally. So hi you, thanks for what you did here. It's a single individual who crafted something. That's exciting to me. I don't own many things in this light that are handcrafted by a single individual. I've handcrafted much of what's in my home along with my wife. We reconstructed our home. We ripped it down to the studs when we bought it. It was a 35 year home and we rebuilt it ourselves. We did all the work with the exception of insulation. I will not install fiberglass insulation. I didn't do the HVAC. I didn't put the shingle roof on everything else we did. This is craftsmanship work. What you see in my shack is craftsmanship work. It was my and my wife's touch that put everything in here and built it. You crafted a radio for me. I have a work of art. I have a piece of craftsmanship. That excites me. Let's go ahead and talk about that size. Here's the microphone. It looks toy-like. It's not a toy. It doesn't feel like a toy, but my gosh, it's tiny. And then when you go to key up on it and you put it up against your face, it's, it's, it's just cute. Is that a word I can use? I don't know. It's tiny and it's kind of cool. It's so tiny. Now let's talk about the craftsmanship here and the sourcing of quality components. Uh, not inside the radio. I, I'm not inside the radio and I'm not going to open this thing up but we're gonna look at the outside. Throughout my career, I've been in supply chain management for 35 years. I have probably been on teams and been responsible for managing teams that have procured easily in my career, well over 150 to $175 million worth of machining. 
So when I look at this, I, I pretty much know what I'm looking at. I don't believe there's a single piece of sheet metal on this. I could be mistaken. I don't think there is. This back case starts right here at this line, continues across the back, and ends over here at this line. I believe it's an extrusion. If that is bent sheet metal that is phenomenally crafted, even here in the US with manufacturers that I consider world-class, I would have a hard time finding a US manufacturer that could do sheet metal that good. So I believe it's an extrusion, and then I believe this one here is an extrusion as well that goes across the front down to this witness line. This front plate goes over top of this, what I believe to be an extrusion. This front plate is machined billet, precision machined billet. Both end plates are precision machined billet. As you look at every fit of every piece, there is zero misalignment. This is beautifully sourced, beautifully crafted at the machine shops. I don't know if this is an anodized or a powder coated finish. It feels anodized. I hope it's anodized because I believe that would be more durable. Powder coated would be the second most durable and then a wet coat would be the least durable finish. I'm not sure which we have here. I believe it's anodized, whatever it is right now, it's beautiful. Um, we'll see what durability looks like over time. Let's talk screen. There is no way that my iPhone, that is my eye in the sky, does this justice. I do not have a camera in my possession. I should say a video cam that I use to roll my video while I'm recording here at the studio. I don't have a single one that does this justice. It is phenomenal, it is crisp. I can see that that 14312 is coming through on my screen as blurred. It is not blurred. This is a phenomenal screen. I will lay over top of this picture uh, my best attempt of a still photo with the best camera shot I can get. Um, I don't own any screen that rivals, okay, I do, my IC705. Not in size, right? Not in size. This is almost the size of the screen of the IC705, but the quality of the appearance of this screen, I would say it rivals the IC705. This is not a touch screen. You're not going to control anything here on the screen. I'm talking about appearance. It is phenomenal. So what place does the FX4CR have on the channel in the future? One of my biggest challenges as a content creator in this ham way of life, which I enjoy, it's my hobby, and now sharing it with you has become a second hobby, is balance. There are so many things that I want to talk about. There are so many great pieces of gear out there. I just can't get to them all. So we'll put this in as much as we can as I continue to learn how to use it. And some of the things I want to talk about are its form factor, its use case. Someday I want to learn digital, and then we'll see how this does digital. But right now I'm having fun with it. Single sideband voice mostly attached to my F loop in the attic, which is another endeavor of mine testing that out. I want to talk about all the different ways you can connect this radio and how you deal with this connector out of the side of the radio. That's a little bit odd to us in the States in the ham radio community, not in other parts of different hobbies. Um, so it's a great connector. This is a fantastic connector. It's very solid. It stays in the radio, but we got to go from that to power poles if you want to operate the way we do here in the States. I want to talk about different cables that you can adapt to the radio. And then I want to talk about batteries. Temporarily Offline did um, a talk about this battery previously, and he started down a path I've been working on for some time as to how to take batteries that we have with us often for our other devices our iPhones, our cameras, etc., and how to use it with ham radio. Do those types of batteries have a place in ham radio? And I think they do, so I'm beginning to explore that, and I'll share some more of that with you in the coming weeks. But what about my initial question? Should you buy this radio? First and foremost, that screen is a billion times better than it looks. My iPhone in the sky just can't do it justice, so don't be tricked by that. It's absolutely phenomenal. As a result of my first two videos on this radio, I've gotten many emails from some of you excited about this. Hey, Bob, should I buy that radio? Well, time out, time out. And that's when I began to realize maybe I need to post another video to let you know, you know what you need to think about 
If you're interested in a radio like I am, that is a piece of fine craftsmanship, that's a work of art, so to speak, that's a, I know it's not a one-off, but it's like a, a painting that was paid for, commissioned by somebody, and then there's a limited number of prints, right? There's more value to those things which are limited, especially if they have intrinsic value to start with. And I feel like this has intrinsic value to start with. Small form factor, 20 watts, beautiful screen, great functionality, and then was crafted by an individual. That was one of the first intriguing things to me. It's size and that it was handcrafted by an individual. You do realize there's a downside to that. It was handcrafted by a single individual. Please do not take these as disparaging comments or negative comments. This is a reality. You is a single individual. He collaborated with other individuals. He outsourced his materials to other individuals and corporations, but he's one single individual. To my knowledge, he does not have a team of 30 designers that had input into this, and this was their project for a year. To my knowledge, he doesn't have a staff of 20 QA uh, directors that have overseen the production of this. To my knowledge, he doesn't have a $300 uh, scope that lets him test this. He has a lot of equipment if you look on his website, but I don't know if he has the latest and greatest. So you see what makes this radio valuable can also be a potential downside. There, there is risk to buying something that a single individual had so much input and control to. Now, from what I know, and again, my exposure to you is, is only what I know of him from other YouTubers and what I've been able to see on the internet and on Facebook, he has a great history. He's designed and manufactured other radios. He has a good track record. He is an individual. So the thing that attracts me and intrigues me could also be a challenge and a problem. You need to think about that as you decide whether or not you should invest $550 of your hard money in this piece of gear that should last you for many, many years. I didn't get in on the first production run. I missed the pre-order release of the radio. As soon as you opened it up for the second production, I got my order in right away. But do understand this is a early release production radio. Early on, I mean, right after the first production made it out to the users, it was recognized that some minor hardware mods needed to occur. And so I think for the orders that are being placed now, it would be for some new hardware, not substantial changes, but significant enough that if you bought a first production radio, you may need to do some hardware mods. There have been perhaps four or five or six software updates since the release just a couple of months ago. So I'm telling you this to think, you know, for yourself, are you capable of doing those things? Bob, should I buy this radio? Well, if you're aware of those situations and that doesn't make you uncomfortable, then by all means, perhaps this is the radio for you. If you get a little bit weak need about thinking uh, of making hardware mods and software firmware updates, then maybe you should wait for a couple of production runs to occur before you make the investment. So I have no disappointment. This is not a complaint by any stretch, and I hope you don't take it that way. I fully expected in initial and early releases there might be some of these circumstances that I would have to deal with, and I still thought it was a good radio for me. If you can't deal with that, then just put the brakes on for now and wait for a couple of more production runs to occur so that all the bugs can be worked out. I hope you found this useful. I want to continue sharing with you why I think it's a fantastic radio, why I consider it a piece of art and a fine crafted uh, piece of kit. But I also want you to be aware of the potential pitfalls of an early release radio and what that would mean for you in the decision making process. Talk to you soon, friends. 73.